question is going to be from uh, Royal Truck. A lot of you are probably familiar with their uh, autonomous attenuator that uh, we bought and demonstrated and had some videos put out and all that. Uh, so what they're going to present to us today is focused on virtual reality training. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve. Um, I, as you can tell from the accent, I'm, I'm not American. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm from the UK, we, we work closely with uh, Royal Truck and Equipment and their sister company Royal Innovations um, on the virtual training and providing 3D animations for training of staff and for illustrative method statements and things like that to assist workers in the safety training. I'm going to first of all start off looking at some uh, 3D animations. Um, there's an animation playing in the background there that we did for a traffic control company in California. And really what I wanted to talk to you about, rather than going through the exact details of this animation, I'm just going to let that play in the background and talk to you about the benefits of 3D animation um, and what it brings to um, safety training for, for people. So my own journey, um, my, my background is in traffic control, which is why um, we've concentrated on traffic control initially for the animation side of things. I spent eight years working in the Republic of Ireland. And when I went to the Republic of Ireland, they had no legislation, no laws, um, nothing governing how people laid out traffic control systems. Very, very sort of uh, primitive systems were adopted by various local authorities and companies, but there was nothing set in stone. Uh, the company I, I went and worked for, we won contracts to develop the standards um, for Ireland and to develop the training for the people in Ireland as well. And during that development, um, we worked with a, a a couple of 3D animators that also worked at the business that used to do the design. When we developed the training, we put a lot of 3D animation, um, a lot of the 3D an animated stills into the training. And as trainers ourselves, when we went out and delivered this, we knew we had a hard task on our hands. We knew we'd got a whole nation of people that were um, working on the roads with no guidance whatsoever, other than things that their own organisations had put into place. So. We knew we had a hard task, but it quickly became apparent as we started to train the people, the 3D animations were a godsend. To have the visual thing playing out in front of them, in line with the legislation that had just been written that was in front of them, to show them step by step on how it's done, um, really, really um, made the knowledge retention uh, and the understanding very, very quickly uh, apparent for them. So. Uh, the other thing that we did with the training as well, everyone's got a smartphone nowadays. You know, all the younger generation that are coming through in you know, all our workforces, they're all very much used to looking at YouTube and Facebook with all the videos and everything else on there. The animations we gave to each of the organisations, and they, they used to put them on the smartphones or the PDAs or any mobile device that was used for work. When the guys turned up to site, if they hadn't done an operation for a, a couple of weeks maybe, or they weren't quite sure about how to do it, it was very easy for them to just pull up the animation on the phone, quick two minutes, bit of a briefing with the rest of the staff, and very good way of uh, sort of rebriefing people in exactly how you want the operation performed. So those are the benefits we found as we went round, and there was a real wow factor to it that the knowledge retention for these people who had no training and were, they had these methods ingrained in how they had to do their work, we changed it around very, very quickly and it was very successful. So the next step after animations, virtual reality equipment started to come out. So Oculus and HTC Vive and people were producing these sort of headsets. Um, and we managed to get a, a headset while they were in development mode from Oculus. And we started to look at the animations. Well, okay, the animations are great, people can see them. Um, people can follow them, you can have voiceovers, you can have text in there, it's very instructive um, and it's very much like any explainer video you might see on YouTube nowadays. But with VR we had then had the um, ability to put people inside the animation. So you could actually go into the animated world, look around and, and, and the first time you go into v VR, if any of you have never been in VR, um, the first time you go in there's a, there is a wow factor because it, it's so immersive, it's as if you, you've just gone into a totally different reality. With the ability to put people in there and then using the computer programmers to make sure you can program equipment so it acts as it should do when you touch it inside the virtual world um, and you get the same reaction you would do um, in real life as well. With all that programmed in, it made it a very, very realistic environment to put people in and have them train on pieces of equipment, 
um, processes as was shown on the animations there that they went through um, and sort of break it down into small bite-sized pieces and, and get sort of new starters and, and even people that are being re-educated or retrained um, for, for new processes. He really made it um, just, just the next level on, on top of the animations. Um, and the knowledge retention again just went up and up with each step like this. With the VR, we've got um, different ways that we can um, use it to, to provide training. Um, you've got an experienced or guided tool, um, and the one shown there is the, the ATMA um, that we, we did for Royal a couple of years back, um, where you guided round and showed how the product actually works. Um, in this particular experience, you sit in the ATMA as it drives. You actually get hit by a vehicle from behind as well, which, you, which is quite an experience when you're very immersed in that world. You've then got um, interactive um, ones where you can interact with, with people and objects. So this one you're sort of guided around, you don't really do anything other than experience it. With this one now, we've, we've done a tabletop one for traffic control where, similar to the table that's in front of me there, we've got a road laid out, you've got a bookcase full of equipment, um, all the traffic control equipment, you've got a, a button you can press to bring the legislation and the traffic control plan up. And you can follow the traffic control plan to the scale of road and set up your equipment exactly as it should be set up. Um, in real life. And what we found that does is it gives a connection for the operatives on the ground between the legislation um, and the traffic control plans and what they, what they actually do in real life. So they, they start to go out and actually measure distances between signs and measure distances between the cones and everything else. Whereas sometimes there's a tendency not to do that. So it teaches them the sequencing, the distances and everything else. Um, and you're actually scored in that one as well, so you can put people through it until they actually get the correct score and, 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 and they pass it. And then we've got another one, um, another sort of level there, performing the job in the first person. So in this particular experience that's shown there, we've got um, people on the back of a, a cone setting truck actually collecting the cones back in at the end of a job. So you physically have to pick up the cones and there's a person on the back that's animated who picks your cone up and stacks it back on the stack. Um, so again, very realistic, you've got all the traffic sound around you, totally immersive experience, it's as if you're actually there on the, on the highway. There's a little video which we'll have produced to just take you through um, an example of some of those experiences. see the guided experience there with the ATMA where you're taking around and there you go that's where you're struck by the vehicle seeing the aftermath of that the tabletop experience you've got the traffic control plans to follow there you can lay out the equipment to the scale that's on the road uh, must be laid out to the correct sequence all the correct distances need to be there. And again, it, it really does give that connection um, to the to the traffic control plan and, and, and the legislation that's there and again you get scored at the end as to how you got on. Okay and this one you're actually the guy in the, the low level cone setting well and you're collecting a job in and all the way through the experience the guy on the back is giving you encouragement and telling you how you're getting on and when you're actually in the experience you've got all the traffic noise um, exactly as you would have out on the highway so again very 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 immersive experience There's a, a vehicle check there as well being done. 
everybody. We all have to do vehicle checks, you get into a vehicle. Um, so we've got a vehicle check in VR. We've just recently done um, a vehicle check for um, Royal and um, a company they're working with in Wyoming there, um, which takes you through the whole CDL pre-check test in VR. Um, so again, we, we're working on developing further things um, for the American market. A few stats about sort of VR training um, that people have come up with. You get a lot of think tanks that are looking at how this immersive training can sort of help people. Um, so it's a right, it's a it's a um, active experience rather than passive. Um, so it's not just somebody sort of lecturing you in a classroom and telling you you do this and taking you through a PowerPoint. You've actually got to physically have a go at it. There's no distractions. Um, if any of you have been in VR, you, you, you'll know that once you're in there, you are completely immersed. Um, once the sound's on and everything else, you're totally immersed in that world. There's immediate engagement, because you, you're in there and straight away you, you, you've got things to do. Aids with retention as we've been through. Um, improves staff understanding of processes and procedures. Uh, reduction in risk level, which we're all after. Obviously the, the training is meant to do, do that, give us uh, competent operatives that reduce the risk level. New workers, you can have them uh, in the VR, they, they can make the mistakes and especially uh, with dangerous situations like working out on the highway or using dangerous pieces of equipment that need to be used in a certain manner, you can put them through VR training and ensure that they know that process um, and that they, they get that sort of memory uh, of doing it because it's so realistic, it, it's as if you're there in real life. And obviously it can provide significant cost savings. Um, one example um, of cost saving is, is exactly um, what we'll now do with the virtual reality uh, experience that we provided for the ATMA. Before that, Royal were going around the country taking the ATMA to different states, obviously high cost, um, flying people around, including driving the vehicle everywhere. Um, now with the, the virtual reality experience uh, for product demonstrations, they're fantastic. No longer does that vehicle have to travel around the states. Um, somebody can jump on an aeroplane with a, with a briefcase with a bit of VR equipment and a laptop and they can demonstrate exactly how that, that piece of equipment works. So for product demonstration, um, it, it's a valuable tool as well. A few of the think tanks there have, have come up with some actual stats. So knowledge retention, as we said, we've, we've, we've banged on about it a, a little bit already, but the, uh, the substance to what we're saying. Uh, retention level after a year of VR training session can be as much as 80% compared to 20% after a week of traditional training, uh, where you go through PowerPoints and things like that. Using head-mounted VR headsets to totally immerse the person, rather than sort of desktop training, where you're just looking at maybe a touch screen or a, a web-based um, system, again, has a lot higher retention rate um, for the knowledge gained. Uh, our brains process the visual information 60,000 times uh, faster than text. Again, and all the young people that are coming through, as I've already said, are, are all used very much to this sort of uh, system. Um, and it's very focused learning. It's, it's a fully immersive experience without any interruption. So it, it really does focus the mind. So that's it. I, I suppose virtual reality and the animations, uh, especially VR, is, is very much a, uh, an active thing. Um, I can sit here and talk to you all day about it. Um, but the best way to sort of experience it is to... Um, maybe see a live demo. Carlos is just going to take us through here um, a demo mode for the, the CDL trip um, that we've just done. I can't get the sound to mirror, so apologies. But. There's a little bit, of, as with most of the experiences, there's a little bit of an introduction first of all to tell you exactly what's going to happen and, and what you need to do. So in this particular experience, you select different aspects of the truck, depending on where you are, as to what you would normally check if you're doing a pre-check uh, trip for a, a semi-truck. 
um, questions will come up, um, the same as you're asked by an assessor uh, doing the, the, the pre-check uh, three. And um, you just answer those questions, and at the end, we'll give you a score as to how you've got. <coughs> See there as well the kind of detail that's in the, the engine there. It's, it's all built to scale, um, exactly uh, as the engine would be in real life. So you can see all the different components. Um, just to say, CK doesn't actually drive the semi trucks. If you're answering these questions wrong. Right, yeah, I'm probably not answering them right. I don't have the CDL. <laughs> so this experience is very much set up as a um, a test and exam sort of situation where it, it gives pre-training before you go and actually do the real test and uh, get people up to uh, the standard that they need to, to, to pass that test. Um, as you've seen with the others, there's lots of uh, other experiences which are a little bit more interactive with the actual equipment. So I think you uh, sort of get the picture with that one there. Um, it, it's a, a sort of exam situation. Um, we've got lots of other experiences uh, with us as well. So we've, we've got the experiences you've seen on the video there. That's it, guys. Thank you very much for your time. Is there any, any questions? Do you see this going to multiple folks can have the VR on at the same time? So one would be on the truck bed and one would be picking the cones up and working interactively instead of a simulation? Yeah, I mean... But basically, we, with, with VR, virtual reality, any virtual reality experience, essentially it's a computer game. The software that's used for building it is computer game creation software, and the guys that do it, that's, that's where their skill is, it's come from computer games. Um, they just build it out as a multiplayer, basically. Um, you'd need the space, obviously. Um, and you might need to scale the space as well, but yeah, it, it's certainly possible. We've actually had people in different areas of the country in the UK, um, somebody in Wales, someone in Manchester, someone in Birmingham, all experiencing the same experience at the same time. Um, so again, it saves all that travel and everything else um, for, for some training experiences. So there's, there's, there's quite a few possibilities with it. Thank you guys, well, as I said, we're on booth 31. If you do want to come and have a closer look or ask us any more questions, um, we'd be delighted to, to, to see you. Thank you. <laughs>